Nice, dude. Faster by two tenths. And they were all A's. Good yeah. work. Thanks, man. <sighs> yeah, I felt good. Yeah. All right. I think I'm done. I'm wiped. I hear you. I'm yeah. feeling the same. Let's pack it in. Okie doke. Dude, that rifle shoots pretty nice. Yeah, it's not bad, man. I just hit the 10,000 rail mark, so honestly, I'm just kind of, I think I'm done with it. Probably gonna flip it for something else. You really think you're gonna get rid of that? Yeah, wirklich. Warum spreche ich Deutsch? Uh-huh. Let's say someone wants to take that off your hands. How many rounds are you gonna say you put through it? Ein, zwei, drei hundert. That's what I thought. Ich werde es reinigen, den Kollen schaff abwischen, schaffe Kratzer raus. See, we don't like that. We like people to spot a rifle that's been used and shot. Just like that. So, I think we give that gun a uniform you can't take off. Nein, 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 nein. Bitte nicht, bitte nicht! <laughs> nein, nein, nein. Warte, warte, warte. Do you want me to start? Uh, yeah, ja, gig like for him. You made me take the mustache off. Let's, let's go back to English. Okay. People have been painting their equipment since, well, they've been using stuff in the world before paint was even really a thing, trying to camouflage the equipment or even themselves. So we're gonna talk a little bit today about paint jobs on rifles. And when you think about painting your rifle, you probably think of some of those iconic paint jobs like those Rhodesian fowls over in Africa, the yellows and greens, or maybe even a GWAT rifle with the tans and browns. Obviously, they're painting their gun based on the environment that they're in. Now, we're gonna start taping up some of this stuff, but we wanna give you a little bit more of insight into our opinion on painting rifles. Not just, well, it looks cool and Instagram told me to, so I guess I have to paint it. Now, first things first, if you're worried about painting your rifle because you think at some point you might want to get rid of it and it would you know crush the resale value yeah it could absolutely make a difference there but what we're talking about is not uh these play toy rifles that you just make for fun and there's nothing wrong with that like have tons of them enjoy them what we're talking about is your go-to guns if you have a go-to rifle or multiple go-to rifles for the different situations that you think you may come across those should be painted to reflect your environment and painted out to be used. They are tools, they are not safe queens, they are not toys. Build them out as if you're going to keep them and have to use them forever. Now there's typically two different methods or ideologies in terms of painting your rifle. Uh, if you're going to paint it, that is. One is for professionalism and the other one is for actual recon. So if you don't ever plan on going out into the woods or doing any sort of like stalking or hiding or shooting from, uh, you know, tree lines or things like that, then the, the need to really camouflage them goes down tremendously. But there is something to be said for painting your rifle so that it looks uniform and professional especially if you have a group of guys that you typically work with or that you would band together with or that you would train with. Yeah, it kind of makes sense for all of you guys to have matching kits, similar uniforms, and the same goes for your rifle. So for the longest time, I painted my rifles to look a very specific way, like pretty much all Ranger green with some hits of, of, uh, of brown here and there. And then, you know, like the netting type pattern or the rattlesnake type pattern. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when you're looking at rifles uh, from far away, someone who's actually trying to conceal their rifle at distance, that stuff doesn't always work out the best. Um, and that kind of goes into what do you actually see when you're looking at a rifle up close? Right, yeah, I mean, a lot of people will, they'll be asked, well, okay, why did you paint your rifle? Or uh, they'll challenge someone else. And typically the answer is, well, if someone sees me, I'm going to be wearing a lot of green and so I want my rifle to be green and it will reduce the opportunity for them to be able to pick up the outline of my gun. They may fall under the impression that if I'm wearing an all green piece of kit, my plate carrier, my you know uniform, whatever my uniform is, if I have an all black gun they're going to see the outline and be able to tell right away what it is. Well the reality is, we, uh, we learned this from Adrian over at Sidewinder Concepts, apparently the human eye can actually pick up one MOA of detail. 
Now that's if someone has 20-20 vision, and we haven't necessarily tested that in a scientific way ourselves, but it starts to make sense. The average human being, actually all human beings, regardless of their fit, uh, finish, capabilities, mindset, they're still an alpha predator. And we have pretty good eyesight. Our eyes are in the front of our head and we are hunting for things the way that we were designed. So, if someone can see five inches of detail at 500 yards, then at 50 yards, if someone's gonna see you, dude, it, it doesn't matter what color your rifle is. They're gonna be able to pick it out. Now, there is a time and a place where if someone is in a very snowy condition, for example, if I were to take this rifle, despite the fact that it's painted into a snowy condition, it's gonna stand out like a sore thumb. So having some mindset in regards to, okay, well, in Tennessee, during this season right now, even though fall's kind of coming on, there's a lot of green out here. So I'm gonna error on a lot of greens. There's some browns, but my primary color is gonna be green on this thing because of this season. Look around at your environment, or even me here on the camera. What you're gonna actually pick up on when you first glance at something is the outline. You're seeing almost a glow on the surrounding of the shape. Think of a tree. You're not necessarily looking at the small details on the bark, you're seeing the outline of the tree, and then as you look at it more and more, your eye starts to fill in some of the details. So our goal is to mask the overall outline of the item. So it's edges, edges versus space. There you go. Edges versus space. Yeah, so your goal is to not actually give it a uniform shape. If I were to paint all of this thing green and then give it a, uh, a fancy coating over the top of it that always looks the same over the entire rifle, it may not blend super well because it is still uniform together. We wanna actually add very strange shapes and splotches and outlines, and there's also something to note, which is on camouflage theory, which actually makes sense. All of your, your patterns should, for the most part, run horizontal. So, mm -hmm. can I see your back real quick yeah. on this M81? So if you actually note, the camouflage patterns, yes, there are some vertical lines, but the majority of everything on this M81 is horizontal. If you step outside and you actually go look at the world that we live in, you're gonna see the mountain range. And I know what you're thinking, well, trees and shrubs and bushes and stuff, they go top to bottom. Yeah, but at distances, we're gonna start to see the outline of a mountain. And then we look down and we see, okay, well, that's where the trees start and stop the ridge of them together. And then we start to see grass and we start to see homes in urban environments at a long ways away. They all run in horizontal stripes. So if you're adding vertical lines straight up and down, technically in theory, as far as camouflage goes, you're doing it wrong. But at the end of the day, that's, that's kind of up to you. Now, you made a point, professionalism yes. as opposed to recon. So what, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so, okay. Let's say you paint your rifle, and we've all seen plenty of uh, pictures of people who have painted their rifles to blend into their surroundings. Uh, you know, there's, there's a rifle, it's perfectly painted, it's laying on, you know, a, a bed of grass or leaves or leaned up against the side of a tree, and it blends in perfectly, and that's awesome. But one of the things to remember is if you're painting your rifle for that type of use, you need to be putting as much time and effort into what you're wearing as, uh, as anything. Because you could have the perfectly painted rifle for the environment that you're in, but if you two don't match, then you've just created another contrasting layer to that perfectly painted rifle. So um, that's an entirely different video is choosing your camouflage based on uh, your environment and the season that you're in. Uh, but just know that you can paint your rifle perfectly to blend in with everything around you, but if you two don't blend in, it's just kind of pointless. Right. Yeah, so uh, something else that was pointed out, again, by Adrian at Sidewinder, since we had a phone call with him recently, he was stressing the importance of how much can someone actually tell about you at distance. Now, let's say that the scenario causes you to be doing something nefarious with your rifle, um, because the world is falling apart, Red Dawn happened, whatever the case is. By the way, that might happen tomorrow. If someone sees you at say 500 yards, they can probably pick up on you and your shape if you're not concealing yourself well, but how much can you actually hide? What kind of information would you be looking for? Are they carrying a rifle at all? Are you putting your rifle in a pack? Okay, maybe you do have your rifle out and about. If you are not able to break up the outline of a black optic on top of a green rifle or a black laser system on top of a 
green or black rifle, whatever the case is, if you're not masking some of that stuff and they can tell, hey, that guy has a high power optic on a magazine that looks like a 30 cal size, I can start to pick up on that person's capabilities. Probably need to be able to stay at least 500 meters, 600 meters away, because I'm gonna assume that person probably knows what they're doing with that high power optic and that high power rifle. Now, what if you're able to pick up on, hey, that guy has a curved magazine and he's got a ton of ammo in his chest rig. Maybe it's an AK. Well, what are the, what's the max effective range of that AK with let's say a 16 inch rifle, typical of what you'd see here in America. We can start to actually deduce, okay, well, these are my ranges. This is what I want to be able to, uh, this is what I have to do in order to encounter this individual. I wanna be able to stay at this range as opposed to that range. So if you're gonna paint something and let's say Drew painted this rifle and he kept a laser system and his optic and his magnifier black, those are gonna stand out compared to the rifle itself and it's gonna give away more information. Cause man, if you are painting your rifle and you are training with this stuff, let's think long term and worst case scenario right yeah so i uh, i don't ever mind painting a rifle i always hesitate to paint the uh, the attachments because i used to like change things around every time but if we're kind of going back to the theory that we've been convincing ourselves of and like trying to be better at over the, over the past few years it is to set something up and then leave it like don't constantly be changing stuff out if i have a rifle that works with uh, accessories that are ideally attached and I'm training with that, then those things should live on there. I don't need to be like taking them off, putting them on something else. And so because of that, let's go ahead and paint the attachments uh, because at distance, again, going back to how far the, the eye can, can perceive something at distance, can see that something's out of place, uh, you know, an, an optic system like this, or an LPVO, which is longer, or even a weapon light that's you know at least five inches. You know, if you're if you can see at one MOA, at 500 meters, then technically you can see a five-inch uh, device or object that's out of place at 500 meters. Um, so we're gonna paint everything because these are our guns that we use, and uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah. Let's, let's start painting. Sounds like a plan. All right, so first things first, we are going to tape up any sort of lens or optic. So I have uh, painter's tape pressed into this EOTech, pressed into the back of it. Same thing with the magnifier, and then same thing with, the, uh, with, your, with your actual like lights, because those are the things that I don't want to get paint on them. I also tape up my trigger. Again, like something this small, you're not going to be able to see at distance anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's painted. Uh, I will also paint the magazine and having the magazine plugged in here also keeps paint from getting up in that magwell. I've made that mistake before where I left it out and then you get coats and layers of paint on the inside of your magwell and all of a sudden magazines don't seat exactly the same. Uh, so that's how I have mine taped up. What about you do the same? Yep, or? Kind of the same idea. You can choose to paint your suppressor or not. If you haven't seen what it looks like before, if you, uh, if you paint that and then shoot your suppressor a bunch and it gets hot, you can get a pretty strange rusty orange color on the end of that suppressor. Obviously you could always paint it again. Some may argue that, well, it's gonna have more of a natural look than just having a black whisper pickle on the end of that thing. To each their own, I tend to not paint my suppressors. Uh, same idea, painting the lenses. Um, I, I wanna be able to tape off my caps and all of my adjustment knobs, so I wanna be able to tape that up on my right on optic as well. If you don't have a magazine or you don't want to paint a magazine, you could always take some like paper towels or whatever, shove it inside of the magwell and then throw some tape on top. Uh, make sure your dust cover's closed. That's kind of the general idea. Yep. Okay. Yep. Troya Gold. That's Allegiance Gold in German for those of you who didn't take any foreign languages in high school. Uh, right now, if you go to AllegianceGold.com, actually if you go to ProtectWithDC.com, you automatically qualify to earn up to $5,000 for the silver on qualifying purchases. There's a lot of gold companies out there. Allegiance Gold has the best rating of all of them. So if you're looking for uh, a way to diversify some of your assets, they're your ticket. ProtectWithDC.com. All right, let's get on with the show. <clears throat> so with my EOTech, you know, although I kind of know these adjustments, I am going to put a little tiny strip of tape right here just so that if I ever needed to reference it, I could. Again, it's so small, it won't make a difference if it's painted or if it's taped up so there's no paint on it. 
Um, with that being said, uh, there's kind of three different uh, styles of patterns to put on a rifle. Number one, keep in mind your edges. So you want to mask your edges, anything that, you know, the, the outline of it. The other one is you want to go in big splotches and you want to go horizontal, not vertical. So uh, think wide, wide strips of thick paint horizontally, not so much up and down. The other thing to consider is like how, how you naturally hold this to your body. So when you paint it, if you have like a uniform or if you have an outfit that you would wear that matches your environment, you're not just painting this for the environment, you're painting it for what you're wearing. And typically as you're holding rifles, most people are holding them like this because you know, if they're up this and up like this and you're shooting it, well, you know, camo matters a whole lot less, but right here. So if you did have some sort of vertical stripe right here, it's actually gonna be horizontal in the, in the area that it's resting 99% of the time. So it's okay to have a little bit of verticality in there. Also so. keep in mind, you can always paint it again, which yeah. is very clearly what I'm doing right now. Drew has a blank slate, clean canvas. I'm just, uh, I'm starting fresh with something that I tried, I don't like it very much. Hit it again. All right, which one are you starting with? Um, give me tan. This one? So I wanna start with a light color. If you had to, how could you camouflage your rifle or yourself or your kit? You could obviously pour some water in the mud and the dirt and make some paste that you could put onto your rifle. But it's a lot easier to make something darker. It's a lot easier to camouflage this with dirt and earth. We're going into an urban scenario, scenario and getting ash and soot out of a fire, it's a lot easier to make something darker than it is lighter. And so I'm going to err on making this a little bit brighter than I think. So I'm starting with tan. I'm starting with a different kind of tan. It's just a little bit darker of a tan. Yep. Um, and again, when it comes to paint, you're gonna wanna go with matte finishes. Satin is okay, but definitely not semi-gloss or full gloss if you can keep from it. I went so. to high school with a girl named Satin. Really? Was she shiny? Was she always sweaty? I, I didn't actually. Oh. I went to high school with a dude named Matt. <laughs> okay, before I paint my rifle, I just wanna show you something real quick. So first of all, anodize. A lot of people will say, yeah, but a black gun still blends in just fine. And I don't disagree, but there is one thing to note. Even if you do have a good anodize on your rifle, over time, as you use that item, it starts to kind of get polished and reflective. So look at the suppressor. It's kind of getting that sheen on it, even though it's a very high quality suppressor that's been used. But as it's been used, it's been, you know, it rubs on the car seat, it rubs on the gun rack, it rubs on whatever, and it starts to kind of get that reflective color to it. Now let's look at one more piece of anodized versus something that's been painted. So here is a rifle that's all black. And here is a rifle that has been painted to be uniform to a degree, but the attempt is to actually break up some of that outline. So as you look at these, the black in its own way stands out and you see the reflective shine, even though we don't have much sun out here at the moment. Anodized works great in kind of having that muted color to it, but at the end of the day, some color in splotchy, inconsistent ways does break up some of that outline. If you think black is super professional, I don't disagree, but this does conceal and hide just a little bit better. And one more thing. We are just dirty civilians. We've never had to recon in a war zone. So take all this with a grain of salt and please consult other people. Though we do have tons of friends who have done this professionally for a living and we've talked with them numerous times about this exact same subject. You shouldn't just watch this video and be like, oh, I've got it. Like, no, man, watch a bunch of different videos. Talk to a bunch of different people. I know the guys over at Spiritus have done this type of stuff. Even our, our, our good friend, uh, Michael Jones, uh, understands this concept. And then of course, Adrian over at Sidewinder Concepts is probably the guy that we've talked to the most about this kind of stuff who did this professionally for years with a whole team. So don't just look at what we do do your own research as well so agreed plus painting videos are entertaining they're fun to watch so
So for this one, this is just a base layer. It doesn't have to be perfect. You saw that first paint can I was using was kind of uh, kind of runny. So I just opened up a new one that has a much nicer like kind of throw on the spray nozzle. And we're just doing light coats and then we're just gonna let this dry really well for probably, I don't know, five, 10 minutes and immediately start hitting it with the next layer. And you know, I know a lot of people do this on cardboard inside their houses and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's also nothing wrong with just throwing it on the ground. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like your gun is going to look somewhat dirty by the time you're done with it anyway. So there's paint splotches, if there's, you know, rubs, if there's smears, if there's some battle worn, it all just kind of like helps it all blend together. Yeah, it's looking like a good base layer, man. The other thing is a lot of people have a picture in their mind. They've seen images online. Yeah. And they have an idea of, oh, I want my gun to look like that. Mm -hmm. And they try to replicate it. But typically the best paint jobs come from a gun that's been used and abused and beat around a bunch. Yeah. You know? Yep. Kind of starts to take on some of that, some of the look of the environment that you're working with. This, these are the same kind of color patterns that I used on my 14.5 with an LPVO. And it looks nothing like that gun. But uh, I could go grab it and we could compare because it's uh it's this, the same color concepts this is still right now this still kind of looks like one color so i'm gonna do more um splotches more splotches here in the middle and then probably out here um let's do i don't want anything brighter yeah i think i need a black to blend some of this but So again, not done yet. And if you notice, there's a bunch of just like leaves and stuff on here. Yeah, do that all the time. Don't care, because once you wipe it all off, it just leaves little micro scratches. And again, not discernible, doesn't matter. Wipes off nice and easy. And uh, we're gonna add a darker color because typically the camo or the, you know, the patterns that I would be wearing are a little bit darker. And I want this to blend a little bit better to me than if I were to just take this rifle out and just set it in the woods by itself. So this is one I've had painted for a long time. Not the most uh, camouflage gun ever, but it's had so much use. This is awesome. At least it looks cool. But I'm gonna paint this stock just because it doesn't blend at all. Paint right over the tape. Tape is another thing we're going to talk about. Oh yeah. Also like, wear gloves. Or don't. Or don't. I don't really care. Better than the paint job I had, that's for sure. Definitely better. Absolutely. Edges are taken away, except for the tip up here. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't, I don't think that part really matters that much. Could be a little bit darker greens. A little bit more splotches of green. Yeah. I'm gonna let that dry though. Ah, oh, damn.
Dang! It's Braco Munition! It's Braco Munition! Guys, right now, shooting surplus. Big supporters of the channel. In the description, you can find a newsletter. Sign up for it. Save on some deals. We're going to go back to uh, LARPing. Uh, I'm out of mags. It's Braco Munition, Josh! Fire in the hole! All right, so guns have been painted. We're gonna to try to show you guys something that we already know to be true. Drew is wearing all M81. He's at 50 meters. We set the camera lens at, what is it, Nick, 50 mil? Correct. So 50 mil is actually what the human eye tends to see at. So we can see Drew very clearly here. He's holding his rifle horizontal, but then as the gun kind of starts to slip down in front of him and then off to the side, that gun is really blending. Now, obviously, we see Drew. He's very clearly in front of us. He is not hidden, but the gun is being blended, and that is not the item that is standing out and giving him away. So, Drew, why don't you run over into the sun? Yep, we can tell based on his body posture and everything else that he is holding a firearm. That's not really, if we're looking for someone like that, I can tell he's got a gun, but even in the sunlight here, the outline of the firearm has been hidden. It is not the item that's giving him away. Now, hey Drew, can you hold your rifle away from your body? So as he holds that rifle off and away from his body, yeah, we can tell the outline of it, but again, it is not the definitive shape that we are used to seeing in all one solid color. As light is hitting the gun, that's really all that it is that we're seeing, light absorbing or reflecting off of a subject. The gun is not the item that's giving him away. All right, back at 50, lens is still at 50 mil, obviously colors and contrast and everything else. A camera lens doesn't work the same way as the way that God designed a human eye, but I can see that B5 buttstock on his left hand side and I can see a long barrel on the right hand side. Granted, we're still only at 50. He's not trying to conceal himself as the gun moves around. I can tell there's an optic on there. I can't see how high power of an optic it is. Granted, if I were to pull up a magnified optic, uh, it would stand out even more and I could tell, hey, he's got an 18 inch rifle with a bipod. Granted, I, that's my gun. I know what it is he's holding. But based on what I can see right here, I can see the receivers uh, kind of glinting even there in the shade. And as he runs over to the other side, yeah, when it's not up against his body, I can tell that he has an LPVO. As he's moving, I can tell, okay, yeah, there is some reflective stuff on that gun that stands out so much more than if it had just been painted. Now, you may be looking at this on camera and be like, I don't know, it doesn't seem that different to me. I'll be honest, I really can tell the difference. Now, if I were to move up another 25 steps or 15 steps, it doesn't matter whether your gun is painted or not. We're talking about something at distance. Can I see Drew? Yeah, you bet I can. What is he holding in his hand though? I can tell it's a rifle. I may not be able to get much more detail than that. When the gun is black, my human eye without any magnification can at least tell it's got a long barrel and a higher power optic. Painting your rifles, it's important, but keep in mind, it's just one little piece of, of a greater puzzle, which is concealment. Right, and there are people who uh, there's an art to that, and we are in no way we're just scratching the surface in talking about rifles. Um, if you think that you can paint your rifle, and all of a sudden you know you're a tier one sniper, like we don't think that about ourselves. Like that's that's not how it works. This is just one little piece of the puzzle. Your environment is constantly changing. The lighting conditions of your environment is constantly changing. Your clothes, what like you know, what which parts of your skin are exposed? Are you painting up yourself? Like all of that plays into this bigger picture question that we've kind of been like poking our finger at. So, absolutely, paint your rifles, paint them in such a way that matches your environment uh, and is professional in a way. Like you know, if you want to paint them neon pink and some crazy colors, like I get it, like go for it, but. Uh, probably not for your like for your like your, your go-to blasters so overall I feel like this thing turned out really well right now what some someone may be saying is well yeah man but the seasons change mm -hmm. and uh, what are you gonna break out a can of spray paint every time it snows or you go into an urban area and you're worried about the concrete jungle yeah so I would say not so much um, or here around here in Tennessee is that a Blackhawk coming they're, over they're coming for us oh yeah they're coming for us yeah yeah, they, oh. they isolated my cell phone signature and they're just gonna instantly JDAM us from a chopper. <laughs> yeah, again, like it's, it, as the environment changes, if I'm really trying to conceal myself, my clothing is gonna have to change too. And then the rifle 
what color the rifle is at that point is way, way, way less important, right? Like you're gonna see my hands, you're gonna see my clothes, you're gonna see the outline of this giant body before you're gonna see the rifle. Right. Um, so yeah, it matters. If you want to hit your uh, rifle with spray paint again, depending on the season, sure, like it's not gonna hurt. I mean, it dries within a couple hours and you're good to go. But uh, you know, here in Tennessee, in the winter months, believe it or not, multicam arid is actually works really, really well because everything's dull, it's dead, or there's some like tans, there's a lot, still a lot of tans. So multicam arid works really well. Am I gonna hit this? Am I gonna change it? I don't know, maybe. Um, but especially wherever it snows, I don't like to paint anything white if I don't have to. But one thing that does come in handy, it's not perfect, but again, you're just trying to, if you've covered the concealment of your body, if you've checked that box and you're moving on to the rifle, uh, hitting it with spray paint doesn't hurt. You can get away with certain kinds of gaffers tape. So like in the winter months, if it snows, which I really hope it does because it gives me the opportunity to do this again. I have done it before and it blends in really well. You can just rip off strips of this and strip up your rifle. And it definitely helps in terms of breaking up the outline. And the cool thing about snow is when you do see, do see color, it's usually like browns or blacks, like the black of dirt or the browns of trees and twigs sticking up. So you can kind of get away with strips of white because everything, every, any kind of color you see is kind of stripped, right? Right. So uh, when it comes winter time, hopefully we'll get a huge snow here again this year and we'll have to, you know, redo it. Yeah, so. e even if you have some extra training gauze that you've been practicing medical with, right? You can break that out and wrap your rifle with just white training gauze, that helps too. Yeah, so white gaffers, gray gaffers, these two are really nice for winter, uh, tan, gaffers and ranger green gaffers and we pretty much just keep this stuff on hand at all times the other thing is you could create some like pattern stick it on your rifle then spray it like if you have a base coat let's say you did a base coat of white oh, right dude you could put you could tape up your rifle and then whenever it comes time that you actually need it you just rip off the tape if you and, lived up north and that was a that was a concern absolutely yeah. yeah so get creative with it like the biggest thing here is just experimentation because uh, it's different for everybody and you know i think that pretty much covers it this yeah. is a paint video there's plenty of them out there i hope we've given you guys a little maybe a different way of thinking about it um but you know don't take it from us try it yourselves and there's nothing there's, there's no secret it's just trying it and seeing what works for you and taking a picture and having someone record you and that's it there's no hidden formula here nope have fun with it Thank you guys for watching. Uh, for our Patreon supporters, thanks for uh, keeping us going. We do appreciate you guys. Any uh, closing thoughts? Any dad advice? Dad advice? Oh, hold up. You're a new dad. What's your dad advice? Well, it may not necessarily be a dad specifically advice, but it pertains to all of us. If you're trying to make a difficult decision, typically the item that you don't want to do the most is the right choice. If you're torn between two things, ah, I feel like I should go to college for that one thing, but it'd be a lot easier to go to Europe. Well, Europe's probably not a good place to go to right now, but I wanna go somewhere and I wanna go vacation around. I wanna take some time and think about myself. The thing that you don't want to do the most, I should get up and do the dishes, but I did tell my friends that I would uh, play some more Call of Duty. Yeah, getting up and doing the dishes is probably the right choice. If you're stuck between the two, do the hard thing. Here's, here's the advice that I would give based on what I'm learning right now. Intentionally slow down. Like slow everything down in your life. Not because you're going to miss the moments or anything like that, but it's so easy to get overwhelmed by being a new dad. And, you know, I'm, I've been a dad for four years and I still feel like a new dad. But just slowing down really um, it makes everything a little bit more meaningful and you tend to do the few things that you do better so slowing down like you know when you're when you're ready to rage on your kids because they just won't shut up and they won't do what you're telling them to do or they're having a meltdown just like taking a breather taking a pause really assessing the situation and being like the cool calm gentle um, but still firm uh, voice in the room it's important so that's not for you guys that's for nick behind the camera because he's just a dog dad I love it when dog parents tell me, oh, I understand what it's like. My fur baby. You don't know nothing. My fur baby. <laughs>
<laughs> Anyways, thanks guys, we'll shut up now. You got a bug on your lens. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Just Can't get it off. Ah! I'm right here with you here. Let me cover up your, I'll cover up your face as much as I'm I possibly. good. I can pull it up over my hat, my hat brim. Vate, vate, vate. Oh, you're good. And I will get my scalps. <laughs> Are you filming this, Nick? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a good day already, this man. This is. This is a good day already. All right, I got my German translation thing coming up. <laughs> I can do a little bit, but I can't do the full shebang without reading the line. No, 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 just like how you had it. Like you're, you're just putting it straight, you're, you're keeping it vertical now oh. while, you're, while you're shaking it. Okay. Looking at me. Put it down. Okay, hold on. <laughs> you, just, you just snatch it out from me and you're like, <laughs> Like oh, this. Okay. Take a step back. Yeah. And then we'll get we'll get the pop from a different angle. Coming okay. down. And then we'll have that. Fair yep. enough. Okay. Put it right down where it was. Like that's what he's marking it off of. 